a woman called Prophetess. Okay. And this is a little stretch, a little elaboration, a teaching. If you're talking about this, the prophet or the prophetess, you don't preach that type of message. You teach that type of message. And reading 71 prophetic fire and world ministries, and the pastor and prophet Randy G. Newman. And we're dealing with five righteous women called prophetess in the Bible. And this is by LDS Living Staff. So we're dealing with a topic called prophetess. And we're dealing with this, we're dealing with women in authority, which, and it's not by always their gender, it's what they are called to be. Amen. And if we can get past the gender, we can go further. Amen. And they've been fighting this for, what, since she was a teenager? They've been fighting this before I was a teenager. Yeah, in their ministry, there's a struggle there. That some and they're still fighting it. Yeah. Now they fight uh, it. Uh, I uh, don't mean to cut you off. I visit church. <laughs> I visit. They know my title, my license, mm -hmm. is an elder. Mm -hmm. Uh, and but whenever I step foot, I'm acknowledged. I don't even look for them to acknowledge me. But I, when I noticed, at first I thought, oh, it's just a miss. You know, they misspeaking. The pastor, who I've been knowing since he was a little boy, now he's about 50, he would say, oh, evangelist so and so is here. He's saying nothing about it the first couple of times. They didn't even spoke to him. Now, wait a minute. If the rest of his family know I have an elder's license, why can And then it hit me. Oh, in his organization, the ladies are called evangelists. You serve there with your title, and your label is evangelist. Mm -hmm. But, and I said, Lord, you shouldn't call me evangelist because I'm not evangelist. I don't do the evangelistic work. So that, but I realized the organization said, so, okay, you want to call me Vanish Fine? You can call me Woman of God. I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> woman of God is a little bit better to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but call the person that they are. Yeah. And respect your calling. And we've been dealing with this for years. I, I've never had a problem with women in authority. That's never bothered me. I like to also say this. I feel, this is me personally. I feel the reason I am saved today is more because of women, not the men. When I was a teenager, I was under, I was in Church of God in Christ, and no offense to any in Church of God in Christ. But the one pastor, Bishop Matthew McClellan, fantastic. But somebody else convinced me because I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I need to be at their church. I didn't know. I said, no, no, I belong to Holy Temple. How you belong where you get filled at. Because they say you got no, I didn't get saved here. I've been saved. I just want filled with speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. That's all. I didn't know better. A couple years later, when uh, Bishop McCarthy caught up with me, I would go see uh, Sister Cleveland Reeves. Mm -hmm. I always put the tent on. Mm -hmm. I would go and he said, I always try to catch up with you. I finally caught you. Call me by my last name. I'm surprised to you who I was when he did. He said, yeah, because you was always at Sunday school, morning worship, YPWW, and choir rehearsal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was. And, um, and he asked me why I no longer was there. He said, you still say because I see it. I've been seeing it. You always come here when the tent's up. And I told him what I just said, you know, what I was told. He said, let me tell you something, little sister. He, you said, right, he gave you the wrong information and I will deal with him. That's called sheep stealing. He said, but you didn't know, but he said, when you leave a church, you always write a letter, a resignation is the best thing, or call, say something. Just don't disappear mm -hmm. and, and, and stuff. But that's been going on, and I've seen stuff as a little kid, not in church, you got in Christ. I've seen some stuff there, not knocking out. It's just everybody is not saying, I don't care what denomination is there. In the Baptist church, the leaders, first one, knocked the lady out. They got rid of him for getting her pregnant and didn't marry her. Now then, she passed out for dead. They never forgot it. Second one, uh, the pastor.
pastor pulled the gun out. That was the worst one. Mm -hmm. Pastor pulled the gun out. Balcony and main floor. Uh, pulled the gun out and said, put all the money in. Nobody paid attention because we used to him lifting up his rope, taking money out and putting it in the offering. But that Sunday, he lifted up his rope and pulled out a long nose uh, pistol. And uh, he didn't last too many years after that. The trustees and them never took him to court. I would say in about five years he passed. Started a new ministry, he passed. The third one, the wife was always iron and fussing with him to get more money from the church before he had to step in the pulpit. She would just aggravate him so bad. So now he's upset and he got to minister to the congregation. I seen all that crazy stuff all before I was 12 years old. Wow. And see? so one minister told me, he said, if I've seen all what you've seen and I've seen some more stuff, but then was the worst. He said, I wouldn't got saved. Well, God, God is still saved. I got saved in the Baptist church. Matter of fact, no, I got saved out on Louisiana Street. I was nine years old. A little girl named Lily talked about Jesus every day in salvation. And the other friend was Gloria. And Gloria's mom prayed like, I say, two burning words coming together. The presence of God would be so strong. And I would always go to the house, pick them up. And Gloria's mom would pray. Even if we were late for school, we never got marked late. God, mm -hmm. They would just say, oh, you girls late? Go ahead. We got to, oh, no, tell the teacher you've been by here and not to mark you late. Tell them to call the office. You girls, not, they never marked us late. Because we always was in prayer. We was late because we were getting the prayer. And so all the, some days we'd be late for school. Wow. And we was blessed behind that. Those are the things. Mm -hmm. These were women's and a lot more women's dads. So it didn't mean take up so much time. But understand. We, yeah. we, we, we had to, I say, give men and women their due. They're just due. Mm -hmm. Not just the one gender, but both. Exactly. They had, had had a, a good influence, mm -hmm. positive influence on you. So tonight we give a book, Five Righteous Women Called Prophetess, and that's what Elder Rochelle Shropshire was saying about women in ministry. It's the things that she did see. So those are experiences. Mm -hmm. What she seen, nobody else could have handled. Mm -hmm. She seen it and she had an experience, but she stayed in the Lord. Some people can't take that. Yeah, God kept me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said I probably wouldn't be saved. The one who says, I had to stay in his church. Uh, he was on the crooked side. Uh, all the young folks were sexually, sexually active for me, and they told them not to tell me. I was dating a guy, and he said it, and when he started pressing me for sex, no, he said, the pastor, um, I said, oh, you lying. Why are you lying, on pastor? I found out a couple years later when one of the brothers followed me to Sister Robinson, that's when he come out. I mm. said, oh my God, I was the man of apology. Because mm. I said he was lying on the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the things that we see, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna and, do mm. and they, of course, a lot of them youth left. Some of them that wanted to be straight left and went to another a church in the uh, denomination of coaching. Exactly. Wow. But the ones who want to keep participating, stay. Some backslid. I don't know if they ever, the ones who backslid, if they ever came back to God. Because mm. I haven't yeah. had no more communication for them. And we give, we give the word called prophetess, a woman that is called prophet. So it's not based on her gender, but it's on notes. Oh, okay. So you can write it down if you want. Prophetess, a woman that is called a prophet, a woman who speaks for God or a deity or by divine inspiration, a woman who speaks for God or deity or by divine inspiration, a woman who foretells future events, 
a woman who foretells future events. I could use my foretell for foretell. myself and others. Foretell goes back like into the Old Testament time. Mm -hmm. Something similar to Isaiah the prophet. That's why they call him the eagle prophet. Mm -hmm. He's seen Jesus coming 2,000 years before his time. Mm -hmm. One who sees futuristic events taking place. Whether it be a, through a prophetic dream. And sometimes prophetic dreams are nothing but visions in the night. Mm -hmm. We see things that are getting ready to come to pass. So that's what a prophet is. But this woman, and, and well as the men, there are some men prophets as well. Mm -hmm. And we're not here teaching on gender. We talk about the Spirit of the Lord empowering us through Jesus Christ in that still that prophetic fame. You have to know your place and your position. Before anybody speaks into your life, your pastor speaks to you first, and God speaks to you divinely. If you have that type of relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A woman who is a spokesperson of some doctrine or movement. A woman who is a spokesperson of some doctrine, cause, or movement. And that is the fivefold ministry movement. The Spirit of the Lord is calling for his saints to be in the fivefold movement. Uh, teaching, prophetic, intercession, the movement. And this is what we want right back to the fivefold ministry again. If that ministry is not fivefold, it will not be successful. Mm -hmm. And it has to be a movement. There's always a revival that breaks out when it's chaos in the world. There's a movement it's coming up now, but it's still chaos in the world. And God always uses a prophet, whether it's male or female, to speak the very things of God to the nations. Mm -hmm. A prophet always speaks to nations. Do all prophets speak to nations or just some? Because I'm thinking of Elijah so and Elisha. One of them spoke to government officials yes, government all the time. Nations. And the other one was the common man. Yeah. There's sometimes one prophet always speaks locally. Yeah. One was local and one was government. Even that prophet, prophetic voice where that one person speaks in tongues with the interpretation. They may see it on TV, but they may not fully go out into the country. And I'm noticing that a lot, too. When they have the gift of tongues and interpretation, and they speak to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So this is what we're going to pay for the first paragraph. The vast majority of scripture prophesies or prophecies were delivered by men. But that does not mean woman doesn't or do not prophesy. In fact, the Lord covenant people have been saved many times by by spiritual and in tune daughter of God. Amen. And, and, and that's what they call them. Some women today they call them daughters in the kingdom. Yes. Although, and though many women include Rebecca, Hannah, Elizabeth, and Mary, all prophesy. They are only a few who are actually designated as prophetess in the Bible. Check out our list below. The first one, and I'm going to read it, and it has some scriptures there, so you can take your pen and start taking notes. Uh, I'm going to be a note taker. Uh, Miriam, number one. Correct. <laughs> uh, the sister of Moses and Aaron, Aaron, Miriam, the prophetess. Found in Exodus chapter number 20, verse. Excuse me, Elder, you read that backwards. I know, I said it backwards, y'all forgive me. <laughs> uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse 20, was assigned to watch Moses when he lay as a baby in the bulrushes. The Lord spoke directly to her and Aaron when they took pride in their prophetic gifts and cursed. Miriam with leprosy. That's found in Numbers chapter number 12, verses 1 through 16. You read that as you follow this video or on your private time. Because she was one of like the children of Israel. She was murmuring and complaining. And they got angry with Moses because they thought that Moses was not hearing from God. So they cursed him to his face. And leprosy is a skin disease. Discoloration, pigment, leaving. Mm -hmm. Away at your bones. Yeah, you at your bones too. The very marrow. 
and it, it causes you to disintegrate. Mm -hmm. She is later named as one of the three who helped lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed them out of the house of the servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Found in Micah chapter 6, verse 4, and Exodus chapter 15, verse 20. If you could, uh, Elder Rochelle, turn to Exodus chapter 15, verse 20, and read it out loud for my mind. In the Old Testament, we call that the Torah. Amen. The Torah. And the writings is up under Moses, the prophet. Chapter 15, verse 20, reads on this wise. Then Marion, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel, it's like a tamarind, or we would call it a tamarind, in, in her hand. And all the women went out after her, and with timbrels, and with dances. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, Exodus 15 and 20. And could you turn to Micah chapter 6, verse number 4? I might have to look and take a contest. <laughs> I, I know about where it's at, but it's taking too long. And it, it is very subtle, anybody. Looking. It's small. It's, it's small. small and book. you'll go over it like like yeah. an open diet. Yeah. You'll go right past, past it. it cause nobody oh, I'm right there at it. And I was at John. And everybody only read that book. It's like it's hidden. Yeah. Micah is six and four. Six and four of Micah. And for those who want to know where it's at, it's after the book of Jonah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 6 and 4 reads, For I brought you up from the land of Egypt. I redeemed you from the house of bondage, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. That's Micah 6 and 4. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we're going to turn to Judges, the fifth chapter, verse number 7. Judges. Chapter 5. 5, verse 7. Yes. Okay, that's Deborah. Yes. Let me read that one. And some people call her, some people, scholars have called her Deborah. Right. And some have said Deborah. I've heard that a lot in the 90s. She's really, a, it's really, if you go on by way, we would say it, Deborah. I don't know how they said it back in her day. Deborah is in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Which is called B. That's what that means. B. Oh, like that. Yeah. Like a bee, a honey bee. Yeah. And uh, it says here the inhabitants of the village, villages ceased and ceased in Israel until that Deborah or Deborah arose, that I arose in the mother of Israel. That means she was covering them. She instructed them, talked with them, nurtured them. And she also sat between two magnolia trees. She was also known as judge and prophetess. Yes, yes. And so she did help lead the children of Israel. People have read this through the years and still don't understand that there are some women that have been selected to lead. What is the problem? Yes, and I'd like to say this. Even though she was a leader, mm -hmm. she stayed feminine. Very feminine, and she still submitted to her husband. Yes. Her daughter. Yes. He was with her the whole time. She submitted to God and then her husband. She took care of home, and then she still ventured out into ministry. Yeah. yeah. So, and we had that right here in Buffalo. If anybody can remember the recess, the same thing. Yeah. Sister Reese prophesied, but she's still subject to her husband. That's right. Why do we mention her? Because she's a legend in the gospel. And she submitted to her will. Yeah. We never in heard of the and yep. at home. <coughs> they get headed up and disrespect her husband. Mm -hmm. We know every marriage has disagreements from mm -hmm. time to time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes women's disrespect they make when they in leadership mm -hmm. uh, position. Mm -hmm. And that's out of 
I mean, you don't be a doormat, but this is the time and place to handle it. Mm -hmm. And you do it out in public. You try to keep that out the public eye. And you don't want to see mess in the pulpit or mess in the marriage yeah. in the church. Yes. Because if, it, if it's back in behind the doors constantly, it comes out. Mm -hmm. So exactly. really, exactly. Uh, like Pastor Alberta taught us, and, and, uh, uh, I'm pastor here. But when I step out that pulpit, I'm Robert's wife, yeah, which was play. her husband's yeah, name. Yeah, she didn't play. I remember her. Yeah, she, <laughs> she cast the devil out of it. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Deborah or Deborah is number two. Uh, five righteous women called prophetess in the Bible. Uh, the fourth judge of Israel. She said, as judge, she was the fourth judge and was directed by the Lord to know when to go to battle, helping to free the kingdom from the sub, uh, subjugation or the foreign king. Deborah, Deborah or Deborah rightly was able to say, I arose as a mother in Israel. Uh, nurturing. And, and she and nurtured them and covered them. Yes. And Judges 4 and 4 says, And Deborah, or Deborah, prophetess, the wife of Labrador, mm -hmm. and she judged Israel at that time. There's a lot in this. Yes. And, she, and they fought a battle and they won a battle. And they wrote a song about her and Barak in battle, yes. Yes. in which it was really won. They helped fight for Israel. They almost, in so many words, risked their lives. They did. They, they you really fight your battle. You fight your battle. Like you your physical life. life. Mm -hmm. And the natural, yeah. So she was one of the uh, the second women, according to scholars, mm -hmm. the old theologians or doctors of theology, that she has been selected uh, as one of the leading women out of the Old Testament. And we have a familiar one. Uh, number three, Hilda. That name, you didn't miss that name so bad. <laughs> Hilda, 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 uh, yeah, Hilda, they didn't mess with it, but I called her Hilda, and lived in the time of righteous King Josiah. She prophesied that the wicked people of Judah would feel the wrath of God, but Josiah would be blessed. That's found in 2 Kings chapter 22. Verses 14 to 20. You want that read? Yes, please. Josiah was a righteous young king. Mm -hmm. I think it was 22. Okay, 2 Kings, starting at verse 14 to 20. So, Hil, so Hilkiah the priest, Elhikam, Kim, Akbor, y'all excuse me for bad pronunciation, mm -hmm. had to work on it, Shephan, and Azahiah went to Huda. The prophetess, the wife of uh, Shalom, the son of uh, Tikva, the son of Hagad, keeper of the wardrobe. She dwelt in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke with her. And she said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on its inhabitants, and all the words of the book which the king of Josiah, uh, I'm sorry, which the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be aroused against this place and shall not be quenched. But as for the king of Judah, 
who sent you to inquire of the Lord. In this manner, you shall speak to him. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, concerning the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse. And you tore your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. Verse 20, surely therefore, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace. And your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I will bring on this place. So they brought back word to the king, who was Josiah. Okay, and I'm going to read this. This is out of my Bible now, the study Bible. And the emphasis of that says it here. Josiah pleased God because he humbled himself before the Lord. Humbling oneself before God is a primary condition before or for becoming renewed, receiving God's grace. It involves one believing that God's judgment towards us are right and just in accordance with what we deserve. Knowing that we, without his grace, are captives to sin and evil, and that we are dependent upon him for all the good. Having a contrary heart before God because of our spiritual poor condition. And that's something? And your heart has to be humble. And that's what the woman prophesied to him because of his heart. And in that day, they were wicked king. Yeah, so she was chosen as prophetess, legitimized to say that her gift was keen. And I heard a teaching on this. And God is very selective at who you choose in that office. That's not a very easy office. Mm -hmm. But when God trusts you with certain things, people are going to begin to recognize your gift. Amen? Amen. Uh, the fourth one is Isaiah, Isaiah's wife which we barely hear anything. Yes. A very quiet prophet. I call her the quiet prophet. Yeah. We heard nothing about her, but that she was called prophetess. And that was it. But it's a chapter 8, verse number 3. Yes. Chapter 8, verse number 3 says here, uh, And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, call his name, Woo, that's one of them names too. <laughs> Mel El Shah Shah of Hashbaz. Yeah, Marshala uh, Hashbaz or something. So that's, that's one of them names. Like do. Yeah, because that's the Hebrew words. Yeah. And, but he, had, he was, his name would start with an M. And it would be like that there. But, and that's all we heard about her. But she was called prophetess. You never heard about her prophesying. Yeah. You never heard about her ministry venturing off. But scholars choose her because the title, prophetess. And because what it says right here in the word. Mm -hmm. Now, would you, for people who don't know this book, would you tell them who it was that went in unto her? Isaiah. And who is Isaiah? Isaiah is the, the prophet. But what is one his relationship to her? You're right, because some husband. people don't know. Yeah, I'll give you a prophetess. <laughs> Isaiah's wife name. Isaiah was a prophet, an eagle prophet. He could see the yes. of enemies from afar off. His wife was called prophetess. Yeah, and they wore a son, and that's when they were a team. But his ministry ventured off. And if they keep reading, yeah, you have to read uh, some, uh, 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 some more. She birthed a couple more children, sons. Yeah. And, I think, I know they were children, I think they were sons, mm -hmm. and she gave them name almost as bad as us trying to pronounce it, yeah. but they have prophetic meaning, the, uh, because that's what the Lord told them, they yeah. give a, a pro name for, for prophetic meaning that was to speak to the nation Israel. Mm -hmm. And they had giftings in them yes. as well. Yeah. But she was one of the uh, number four, Isaiah's wife, called prophetess. 
now we have a familiar one, and I think everybody know her. Yeah. Um, move on to the New Testament, and we call her Anna. And I've studied about her, and that's in Luke chapter number two. And of the prophets, but she was also a widow. Yes. And she prayed very fervently. Uh, in the temple daily. She prayed a lot. She was a consistent prayer woman. And that's what a prophet does. We pray until we hear from God. Mm -hmm. Until God reveals to us what he wants us to see. Isaiah, Luke chapter number two. Or number two, verse 36, 36 to 38. To 38. Uh, here it is here. 36 to 38. It says here, there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanal, and of the tribe of Asaph. She was one of a great age, and she lived with an husband of, was that, seven years? Yeah. From her virginity. And it says if she was a widow of about four scores and four years. So that's about 84, right? Yeah. Which, Eight four years, she lived as a widow. As a widow, yeah. So she became a widow very young. Yeah. Into her old age. Uh, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. She, and she coming in, in an instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And let me read this here. It says here, Anna was a prophetess who earnestly hoped for the coming of Christ. She remained a widow for many years, never remarried, uh, but devoted herself to the Lord with fasting and praying day and night. The Bible teaches that the unmarried state can be a greater blessing than the married. Paul states that the unmarried have greater opportunity to concern or you know, concern about the things of the Lord, how to please him and how to give undistracted under, devotion to him. And that's true. I've heard that through the years. You're more successful in your single years in the ministry. And she was very devoted and she was a very gifted prophetess. Uh, a young widow, but yet in her old years she really went in to a lot of praying and fasting. Undistracted. Mm -hmm. And she stayed in the temple on a constant basis. I've heard other prophets of old, who said they would stay in the house and pray and shut down for three and four days mm -hmm. with just water, no food. That's right. And that's the old, old school. Oh, talking about the 60s and early 70s and the 80s. Uh, I can interject. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, we used to have a lot of traveling evangelists, mm -hmm. late Jack Cole, mm -hmm. uh, A. A. Allen, mm -hmm. uh, Brother Shamrock, and probably a lot of names I don't know. Uh, but in their books, or if you was in, went to their ministry, mm -hmm. they talked about one thing that's uh, good, even for people who be prophetic. You have to deal with your issues. And a lot of time with prophets or those who travel like that, they have to get along with God and deal with whatever issues they have or temptations. Yeah, that can be an issue mm -hmm. and for God to empower them because it comes. It comes without you looking for it. Mm -hmm. It comes and you need to be uh, strong in God, not in, your, in our flesh to overcome it because temptation comes. Christ uh, today with our words, Christ said to me when tem certain temptations come up, it's not a sin to be tempted, it's a sin to yield to it. True temptation, exactly. Because it's going to come. Exactly. And you will be tempted even in the prophetic. Yes, yes. And there, are, and there are those who have misused that gift in the prophetic, and there's one, uh, the opposite flip side of the prophetic, I believe it's in Acts 16 and verse 16, the damsel. Yes. And that's the spirit of a witch. Yes. Soothsayer. That is the very opposite of a, of a prophet. 
and you will run into those in this prophetic journey, and they will test you. And I have their tendency and the audacity to ask you, what is the Lord saying? When their spirit is not correct. Or they'll try to pick their spirit. Or one of my phases, I think, uh, they'll go and act like they're a believer and they're right with God. And this God reveals it to you because they're, they're, they have our lingo. Mm -hmm. They make our movement, their dress. Mm -hmm. They, they have a, they give off a persona mm -hmm. of being right, and the Holy Spirit will say, uh uh, and well, me and I'm talking, but they look fine to me, so he said, mm -mm. no, mm -hmm. you see, yeah, and there's two, there's two other false prophets they got here on the last paper, and I agree with Elder Rochelle, that's true, they may look nice, they may talk nice. They know how to talk, they pray to the Lord, yeah. Mm -hmm. they know how to fit in. Yeah, and they know church. They have theatrics. a written rhythm. They, thank you. They know uh, uh, all the dynamics, but they don't have him really abiding on the outside. They have a form of God in them. Exactly. Yeah. And they look godly, but they, their spirit is from under the ground. They have a religious spirit. Deeply religious. And a false prophet would also pull you away from Christ and not add you to Christ. Yeah. They'll pull you away from Christ and build up their own kingdom. Yes. You gotta watch who's speaking into your life. Uh, there's one on the bonus. No, this name here, Lord of so this is No Adaya. No Adaya. Join with the others in trying to prevent Nehemiah from rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah could say, um, what's her name again? No Adiah. No, no Adiah. No Adiah. As she said, another prophet who sought to discourage her. I perceive that God had not sent her. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. That's found in Nehemiah chapter 6. We're going to read that too. We want you to have all this. We want you to take notes. Know who's speaking into your life. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 10 through 14, if you don't mind, Elder Rochelle. I'm looking, I'm mm -hmm. just taking trouble. Mm -hmm. So if you have yes. trouble, yeah. take it too long, go to the table of content. <laughs> it's holding y'all. That's why I heard the preacher say it's holding. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm No Dyer does exist even no, in this day. No Dyer, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, uh, audience. Nehemiah is after Ezra. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, chapter 6. Chapter 6, verses 10 and 14. Okay, this is the end. Starting at verse 10, mm -hmm. uh, Nehemiah 6. Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son, oh, help me here, uh, the son of Deliah, uh, the son of me, head of Bel, or Abel, son of me, head Abel, who was a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. And let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night, they will come to kill you. And I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there? And uh, yeah, it's me and mine. And who is there such as I, who will go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Shanabalek had hired him. For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way and sin, and act that way and sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report that they might reproach me. How far I got to go? Verse 14. Mm -hmm. My God, oh, remember Tobiah 
and Shanabadak according to these their works and the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. And I'm going to read this right here. Uh, somebody, uh, Tobias and Sambalat. That's the name. yeah. And there was a distraction to Nehemiah. And look at the number, number six. That's flesh, man. Mm -hmm. But there was a distraction and brought this false prophet. Um, he told him in verse number 12, he says, I perceive that God had not sent them. And all who claim to be messengers, God must have tested as to be whether that they were really from God. If you are prophets in this day, you will be tested. And you will know those who have been sent from God and those who have not. God will allow you to see if there's fruit on the tree, whether it be figs, leaves, or a, a, a parched tree, but it has no life to it. If the tree is dry and parched, God did not send them. The tree represents leadership. You will know those who speak it into your life. Some will claim to be believers, proclaim that they are undertaking a ministry ordained by God, yet in reality they are only seeking glory, prosperity, that they may prostitute their gifts Amen. for themselves. God's people need discernment to judge the personal character and loyalty to God and his standards and all those who present themselves as spokespersons for God. You are no those who you labor with. Not just know those that we can labor with. And you're supposed to know. I've had people come speak to me in my life, and I knew some of them was false. I know one right now. Every time he speaks to me, a, a prophetic word, I feel absolute nothing. And you can tell that it's false. And this is not to discredit him. This is not to destroy his character. But I know that if he does not know, I tell him about that. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, that's not me talking. Deuteronomy 18, verses 1 through 10 says, hold on. When it speaks about when a prophet speaks. Deuteronomy 18, verses 1 through 10. If a prophet speaks and says, Thus saith the Lord, and that prophecy comes to pass, surely that man is a prophet. But if a prophet speaks and God has not spoken, surely that prophet shall die. So we have to be very cautious at who we allow to speak into our lives. She was a distraction. She walked in the office of a witch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard a one girl said she had a dream about a land of witches, and she seen well-known prophets in that dream. Very accurate, but their spirit was witches. They had a spirit of a witch in them. Mm -hmm. You got to be so, so careful. This is not here talking about prophets to destroy their character. We're telling you to beware yes. who speaks into your life. Because if that word is spoken to your life and falls to the ground, something's wrong with it. You won't even prophesy what the word gives you. Mm -hmm. Um, question. Mm -hmm. When something has this happened to you a few times, uh, folks call themselves, uh, give me a word, prophecy, but they also were throwing off on me mm -hmm. and they were saying stuff about me that weren't me. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> The first, the one, one time when it would happen, I was shaking my head, no, without realizing I was into uh, the uh, minister called it to my attention while he was speaking and says, "Oh, you so something like you so stubborn or something you said. Uh, you not, you say shaking your head. No, I had not realized I was shaking my head." Left to right, no. That my pastor uh, was sitting there, and my pastor said to herself, "He's lying on her." And she started to say something, but when she, before he said anything, she noticed my head was going left to right. Said, "Oh, she ain't even seen me. I don't need to say nothing." I don't uh, know. False words. And not the time they didn't attack me. But they said I had um, the wrong attitude to some people, and I didn't. And so I said, Lord, I'm not trying to be funny, but if I had wrong attitude for this group of folks, which were family members, you, go, you need to say you let me go all these years and blah.
blindness and not, not check me, you don't work like that. Exactly. You would say, so I didn't say anything to them. I didn't move my hand, just, what is this guy? That's not, that ain't me. Mm. I ain't had nothing that's against not that stuff about reading. It was, a reading. It was well, you know, I spoke yeah. to you about it before. Yeah, that's a reading. Yeah, that, 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 and he that was ain't very me. much off. Oh yeah, way off. Yeah, because when you told me the first time, I said that the, that the Holy Ghost, I don't feel like I'm seeing one, you know where from it. When, when, we're, when we are wrong people, mm-hmm. speak, speaking from personal experience, mm-hmm. when we are out of order with God, first person he's going to get and say something to is you yourself. Holy Spirit is going to check you. Then if we hard hit and rebellious and don't want to listen, and he's not going to just say one, he'll say it a couple times. Then he'll send a witness to you to say, to check you, so and so and so and so, let you know you're out of order. Don't hear that? Then there'll be a second one. Come on. After a while, it's out. Because the Lord does it in increments to get you he give you a space to repent. I can't tell you the time frame because it's different for everybody. And of course, I'm quite sure it's according, it's according to our spiritual maturity and also uh, what we know, what our relationship has been. So that's our growth in God, spiritual maturity. Also, uh, the attitude where we're caring, time, and what the sin is. Mm-hmm. I always feel like this. I tell folks, I could get crazy and walk away from God. I think I would be gone quick. I don't think I would live a, a very long time. Like some people, a whole lot of years mm-hmm. after they walk from God, mm-hmm. uh, 10, 20, 30 years, I don't think that would be my story. Mm-hmm. I, I not even when I was young because of what I've seen God do in my life and how God used me. I, I, the, the, I, I would be very foolish. That's how I looked at it. Be, be, because uh, his anointing and how he has allowed me to be privileged to some things that, because of the ministry I was in, that, no, you're just not going to trample over my goodness that I have imparted in you and allowed you to see and experience. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. So we have to be careful. When the Holy Ghost check us, and we have to be prepared, we need to do it quick. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And those, uh, verse 14 says here, the prophet that would have put me in fear, Nehemiah suffered from a false brother who, although claiming to labor for the honor of God, were in reality in need uh, with God's enemies. Be careful who's in your circle. Mm-hmm. This betrayal of God and his kingdom by the false brother. When you are a prophet of God, you God for the false prophet and the false brotherhood. They come. Mm-hmm. And they're going to come from the Lord. The Lord told me to do this in 30 days and 40 days. I'm going to try that one too. I'm 30 days and 40 days. And the Lord said, going to turn it around. That's a false brother. His, his words are not strong or strengthening. He's not really hearing from God. He's hearing from the soulish. Somebody is in some bad with the troublemakers. And they brought this false prophet in, or prophetess. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, also, people who uh, are strong in the prophetic, in the office of a prophet or prophetess, you have many people who, like Elder Randy said earlier, uh, they just want to be around you to use you for your gift. Exactly. Or the giftings that's placed in you. And one of the things we both have heard from, uh, now his, his title is apostle, but we still call him Bishop. Bishop Samuel said, you, you look at it like this, Christ had 12. He picked all 12. One of them was Judas, the betrayer. So you need to think that every 12 person, every 12 individuals around you, one of them is going to be a betrayer. Mm-hmm. So you got 24, you got two. Mm-hmm. 36, you got three. Mm-hmm. There's always, 
uh, for a friend that eventually will portray you. Exactly. One told me years ago after we exposed her, this is back in the late 90s, 97 to be exact, oh, I never liked Randy anyway. That was, that, that that was in that. her heart. Yeah. That was in her heart and she ex exposed herself. And yeah. here recently she asked, because she had my number and I told people to tell her no. No. Well, you know, I never really hated him. I just didn't like him as much. Then you still can't have my number. Because <laughs> you got the wrong motive. Amen. Something she wants. Mm-hmm. And she won't be dead. Mm-mm. God will allow you to see what yes, people think of you. Yes. Prophetic. Yes. He allowed you. Somebody came in my life a while back. And I said, Lord, we had a bad blowout. I mean, a whole lot of years ago. Mm -hmm. Two, more than two decades. And I said, why do they want to be bothered with me now? Mm -hmm. And they want to okay, forgive, forgive. And then maybe they're okay. But I kept praying because I was uneasy about it. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord spoke. That same spirit that attacked me over 20 years ago came back at me again through the same person. And I said, okay, they only wanted to use me for head knowledge. Yeah. Biblical head knowledge. And they wanted to control me. And it got exposed. I never said anything. They just, they went off the rail. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, I said, well, thank you, Lord, I prayed. Mm -hmm. And said, what is they here for? Why did what they want? Mm -hmm. Lord, I just allowed it to come out. Mm -hmm. I've experienced that as well. Someone that I met uh, some years ago. Nice brother, good friend. Uh, did he say he had a gift of dreams? Then he told me the rituals that went with his dream. I said, what are your rituals? Oh, um, well, Dad, since I dream a lot, when God talked to me in dreams, I played my numbers. I said, oh, what else do you do with that? He said, oh, I played my numbers. I, I sprinkled salt around my doorposts. I said, okay. Sorcery. Sorcery. He got spiritual gifts and sorcery mixed up. Um, he said he put you know, right out the window. Oh. Wow. I thought you were supposed to put it in the toilet. But uh, he said when he's feeding his feet, he spits on the, uh, the broom. I said, okay, so Father, I need you to get him out of here. And one night, I had been praying for him for three days, was fasting and praying. And I said, Father, what is, why is he here? And he took me into a deep dream. And I seen this person face to face, and he had makeup on his face like a clown. Clown means to play with the things of God. He was not really serious about the things of God. And all of a sudden, my phone stopped ringing. We never seen each other, never met in person. Uh, God quietly moved him out of the way. He was into spiritual things, but it was going into the demonic. And we have to be so careful. Who is in our circle when you're prophetic? You cannot walk with everybody. You cannot hang with everybody. You cannot be at everybody's house. You cannot mm -hmm. eat at everybody's table. Yeah. And some of you know nobody is God will tell you you ain't going. Because his hand ain't in it. Mm -hmm. I've seen that through the years. And we have the last one, and this is a well-known false prophet says, I don't want to even call them prophets, but that's the evil spirit of them that one. Uh, the spirit of Jezebel, yeah. a false prophetess in by who's that? Take the tyrant, tyrant branch of the church mentioned in the book of Revelations. I have few things against thee because thou suffered that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Revelations chapter number 2, verse 20. Juanita Bynum says something very clear on her tape on the Zeus 99, and it's on YouTube.com. She said, you can fornicate and still, still feel a person's gift. Huh? You can fornicate and still feel a person's gift. So the other person who's not 
Hey, can fill your gap. Mm -hmm. I gotta write that, brother. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the bomb case. <laughs> That's still. Still. Yeah. Uh, I've met some for years. Four mothers, four mothers. But they prophesy. But it's a familiar spirit. Yes. And seduce people out of their money. One said, after this prophecy, God wants me, I'll share this with you, and this is the closing. Uh, said, I was at a revival, I won't say where, I don't try to turn nobody's ministry down, but we're trying to build up one. Amen? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was asked to go with a friend to a revival, and this woman was from Massachusetts or somewhere. She was a white evangelist, but she folded in the prophetic. I knew when I walked in, something was off. They didn't have to tell me. <laughs> so I went in, I sat down and behaved myself. I did some praise and worship and said a few words or whatever. Got involved in the service, but you always observe. My mother said two things years ago. Every house carries a spirit. Amen. That's true. Whether it be the White House, your house, or the church house. Mm -hmm. So we enjoyed the service, and then she began to prophesy. And she said this, and I knew that's when I knew she was a witch. There's a man in here, you've been watching me ever since I hit the platform to preach. That is not discernment. And I just sat there and looked at her, straight in her face. I said, girl, must think I'm real stupid or something. Then she went back into the prophetic and prophesied to a young lady, and the young lady began to cry. Ooh, who crying? She says, woman, she says, young lady, am I on point? She said, yeah, yes, you are. So you all in my business. I said, mm -hmm. And she told the young lady why she was prophesying to her. The Lord said to tell you, go in your purse, that black wallet where the credit card section is, and donate and put a hundred dollar seed in because he's going to tear up the foul grounds for you. I knew from there on that was a lie. And I said, God, did you bring her back here? I didn't see that lady since it's been about nine years. She wasn't prophesying the truth. She was prophesying for money. money. And you allow that spirit in your house for God's house. Yes, God. And I, I said, look at that girl. And what some ministers have to do is the uh, senior servant has to sometime maybe need to say something. One of my friends I would like to share this home by offering, uh, well known evangelist back in the day. And uh, the pastor said he wanted to take off the offering. And the pastor told him, No. He said, Oh, I can get big money. He said, I know. He said, but I will take off the uh, take up the offering because we got to leave wood, some wool on the sheep because winter is coming and they can't have all their wool shaved off. They'll die. Ooh. I never heard that. I said, wow, that's very powerful. That pastor, uh, well, he's a bit, he carried a bishop's title. Uh, he, he's passed. Uh, his uh, late bishop Crosby of the uh, Greater Emmanuel Temple. Uh, not Emmanuel, uh, yeah, Greater Emmanuel. Yeah, he was a I'm rich man. Yeah. 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 He was a very, very discerning man. Yes, yes, he was. Yes. 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 Little short guy, but shining in God. Yeah, and then you can cross that, brother. Shining in God. But yeah, I've seen that for you. And naturally, he's a little short guy. <laughs> but giant spiritually. Mm. He knew something was wrong with that man. Yeah. When it came to money. To money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it came to money. No, no. I never get this. I was at a party on the closing. And he was outside. I was at, at the Greater Refuge Temple at the time. Nothing against Refuge Temple. Not speaking against the Lord. It was, not funny. It was an, another preacher. He was not a member. And me and Robin was outside talking. Pastor Sanders Jr. So this man walked up. And Mr. Sanders came out the side door. We got the cultural center in his office. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to tell him anything. I just looked at the man. The man said, the Lord sent him here to be a part of this church. And I pulled Robbie to the side. I said, let you let that man up in here. And I finished telling Robbie that he was Apostle, Apostle Sanders, heard the conversation. He heard nothing I said. He said, are you serious? I said, no, don't let that up in here. I seen a spirit of harm on him, or a horde on him. And Bishop Sanders said politely, he looked at Son, God is here to this house. Go back from where you came. 
He didn't have to tell me. I knew it when the man walked up. Something was off. God will, God will let you know. You might not know exactly, but he let you know. He emailed, like Elder Randy said, you can walk in a place you don't know the speaker, and you haven't seen the speaker yet. But the, if they've been there a day or a few hours, when you walk in, the Holy Spirit will check you. And he said, something ain't right. I don't know what it is yet. But something ain't, and the Lord would tell you. I've been at meetings just like you. Just stepped in, I thought. Tell the folks I come in. Mm-hmm. Something ain't right. Oh, there you go. I said, I haven't even seen the preacher. I'm just telling you, something ain't right. That's all I know. Mm-hmm. After a while, you start service that going. So the Holy Spirit is talking, but when you got you, they're not straight. Mm. They're, they're from me. Yeah, Don't you come back no more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure you have to go back to that service. Don't you go back over here. <laughs> you will do it. So on prophetic fire word ministries, we talk today on the five righteous women that are called prophetess, which we already elaborated, we already gave the information. Take notes, read the chapters and the verses which we've already given you. Uh, understand that everybody cannot speak into your life. Amen. They've been called or chosen. Be careful who speaks into your life. Remember what I said, you can fornicate and still feel somebody's gift. And that might be why some people Male and female mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. go after um, people to mess up their gift. Yep. And try to pollute yours. Yes. And destroy it. So be encouraged. Watch who speaks into your life. Check their history. Mm-hmm. And close it. This was told to me too. And don't forget to give them that scripture. Which one? Revelation mm-hmm. chapter 2, verse 20. Mm-hmm. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Before you invite these prophets in, check their history. Who did you sit up under? When was you birthed into ministry? When did you accept the call? Do you have a prayer life? When was the last time you heard from God? And what did he say to you? Was it in the scripture or outside the scripture? And who you up under now? Why am I so pinpointing? Because I've seen it. We was in revival about last year. Somebody asked me about a certain person. Like, where did they come from? I said, you were supposed to check that before you bought into the house. You didn't know who you used to use under? No. Well, why did you invite them? They did not check. They up under somebody. But you're supposed to know that before you invited them in. So be careful out there. God bless you all. Amen.